Jeff Lynne's Electric Light Orchestra are going to call it quits after one final run. They are dubbing it the Over and Out Tour. The 27-date tour kicks off August 24th in Palm Desert, California, and wraps up October 25th in Los Angeles. Though it is possible they'll add additional legs before it ends, ticket sales begin March 22nd. The original incarnation of Electric Light Orchestra ran from 1970 to 1986, landing timeless hits on the charts like Mr. Blue Sky, Evil Woman, Strange Magic, Don't Bring Me Down, Turn to Stone, and others. When frontman Jeff Lynne dissolved the group to produce other artists, including George Harrison and Tom Petty, ELO drummer Bev Bevan carried on with new musicians under the moniker ELO Part Two, creating bitterness between the two camps that last to this day. Lynne resurrected Electric Light Orchestra in 2001, but he only invited original keyboardist Richard Tandy back into the fold. Their new LP Zoom was a commercial disappointment, and an arena tour was canceled due to poor ticket sales. In the summer of 2014, Lynn and Tandy brought the group back to life under the new name Jeff Lynn's Electric Light Orchestra for a massive outdoor concert in London's Hyde Park. I had all these negative thoughts before agreeing to play Hyde Park, Lynn told Rolling Stone in 2016, but the crowd just went bananas all the way through. They loved every minute of it. It was the best show I'd ever been involved with up until that point. The reaction to the show inspired Lynn to bring ELO back on the road for a series of successful arena tours between 2015 and 2019. They recorded the new albums Alone in the Universe in 2015 and From Out of Nowhere in 2019. Though Tandy missed the last few tours for reasons that have never been explained, a 2020 tour was canceled due to COVID. The group's first show since 2019 took place 2023 at Joe Walsh's Vets Aid concert in Chula Vista, California. As Jeff Lynne's Electric Light Orchestra embarks on their farewell tour, fans can expect a celebration of the band's illustrious career, filled with unforgettable performances and nostalgic moments. From classic hits we all know and love, to new favorites, the Over and Out Tour promises to be the ultimate send-off for one of music's most iconic acts. Let's quickly step back into the vibrant musical scene of 1977 a time when vinyl records reigned supreme and album covers were works of art in themselves. Here we have an original review of the Out of the Blue album, an album whose production has gained admiration over the years. Notably, producer Stephen Wilson, frontman of Porcupine Tree, has cited Out of the Blue as one of his favorite records, highlighting its influence on subsequent generations of musicians. Let's go ahead and board our spaceships and shoot back to 1977 and hear about the new Electric Light Orchestra album. Out of the Blue Electric Light Orchestra by Michael Barockman. Jeff Lynne is well on his way towards becoming this generation's Phil Spector. The seven-man band he fronts and dominates, ELO, has no distinct personality. The grandiose sound created by a masked man behind the controls is the only thing that really catches the ear. But instead of a wall of sound, it's more like an increasingly worn picket fence. Ever since the mass success of Evil Woman, Lynn has forsaken classical rock experimentation and become more and more entrenched in a repetitious pop rock formula. Out of the Blue's outer space cover may imply a look into the musical future, but the record is really a rather clinical view of the past. All the trademark ELO song ingredients are lavishly promenaded, full choir, orchestral frills, and of course, vocal echoes. But the tricks are employed so often that their cleverness soon becomes cliche. Never an expressive vocalist, four sides worth of Lynn's placid singing, no matter how many overdubs, adds up to monotony. All you get is pure pop fluff. What saves this record, and indeed makes the fluff often fascinating, is Lynn's devout examination of 60s American pop. ELO's music has long displayed strains of the Beatles' I Am The Walrus period. But here Lynn shows his fondness for the obvious and hidden corners of early American pop music as well. For those attached to the musical evolution of such aching and acne-filled memories of teen reverie, Lynn's offerings will in the end prove irresistible, despite the dismaying lack of true character and feeling. A romantic venture to the drive-in may never have been more glamorized than in Night in the City, replete with a swirling orchestra, operatic choir, and a dense Tommy-like acoustic rhythm. The song takes on almost religious overtones. Throughout the album, there are similar 60s illusions. 
Lin once said he tried hard to disguise his influences, but what makes these songs such delights is the outrageous overtness of it all. The album's coup de ville is Concerto for a Rainy Day, a four-song suite that pays homage to Spectre, including rain effects in Standin' in the Rain, Brian Wilson-style Pet Sounds Harmony in Big Wheels, and Paul McCartney in Mr. Blue Sky. Out of the Blue tries to be the ultimate 60s experience making for an enjoyable, if limited, adventure. By Michael Barakman, 1977. You won't want to miss out on a final chance to witness Jeff Lynne's Electric Light Orchestra live. We will, of course, keep you up on any news or updates. Until next time, thanks for watching Rock Buzz. Help us keep rock alive. Please hit like and subscribe.